All right, YouTube, this is Tucson back with my two cents on Octopath Traveler. And today we're going to be doing our kind of preview video for Alfin. Uh, it's coming Wednesday for us. And so we've had a little bit of a short week since we had our update on Thursday last week. We are going back to the Wednesday updates. So this is uh, going to be, you know, a lot of people's, you know, one of their favorite characters, one of their favorite units. So uh, let's take a look. I don't anticipate any changes to the kit. Uh, and once you get in there and see how good it is, you'll you'll see why. Uh, I uh, you know once again, if there is, we'll pin a comment in there, and I'll let you guys know via community post or something. Let's get into it. All right, and before we get too far into it, I just want to you know show you guys here that we uh, have a new website that we're looking at, which I think is very well organized, looks really good, uh, and you can just kind of scroll through here. Uh, we do have all the future characters on here, so if you kind of want to sort. Uh, and kind of look at just uh, you know the, the our units you know that we have already out or the JP ones anything like that you can kind of look in here. Uh, I just kind of wanted to give a shout out. Uh, this is from Monty VGC. They kind of posted this on Reddit a couple days ago. Uh, I got in contact via you know DMs and said, hey, will this be okay to kind of utilize in videos? You know, maybe save me a few steps as, you know, transferring, you know, things to making them look a little bit nicer. I think this website already looks nice enough and is, you know, easy enough to read uh, compared to our uh, standard Google Sheets, if you guys have seen that out there. From my understanding is that he did take most of the information from the Google, uh, Google Sheets, so uh, I will link both down in my descriptions to make sure we give credit both to... Uh, Shizu Cats and everybody who's been working on those spreadsheets, as well as Monty over here who has moved everything over to this nice, beautiful website here. So with that out of the way, let's kind of take a look at uh, Alfin here. And we're going to just kind of look at his kit and his stats and what we would typically do uh, from this. And then you guys let me know if you like the website better or if you like my old kind of way of doing this better. And, and I'll kind of just adjust however you guys uh, prefer because uh, it, you know, makes no, no, you know, no big difference to me. So uh, going in here, we're going to see some nice little stats here. We have an apothecary and it can even give you, oh, their influence type, their, uh, their location of kind of where their kind of quest is going to take part. All right, so looking at our stats here, we got a decent like health pool at 3235. You guys can kind of read this. I want to point out the big things. A uh, big thing, obviously, is his physical attack at 380. That's really you know a decent number. Closer you get to 400 for our physical attack units is always pretty great. Uh, as well as that physical uh, physical defense, we know apothecaries typically are packing that physical defense on. In Alfin is uh, you know the same with that at 392, pretty good. Uh, and then. We're looking also at our, uh, you know, elemental attack, our magic attack here. It is sub 300, uh, is in the elemental defense is, you know, way down there at 238. So just keep those things in mind as we look at the kit later of his uh, elemental attacks are going to probably be more useful for just the shield breaking rather than doing the big damage on there. Uh, decent, uh, you know, sort of crit for the sort of unit and uh, kind of a speed stat that I would expect to see from Apothecary uh, uh, 256 there. Uh, moving down, we can just seamlessly go through here. And this is this is actually kind of nice. I don't have to like switch slides or anything like that. So we got our passive skills here, uh, which is kind of, I like seeing these up front because a lot of times you can tell how the rest of the kit's going to work based off the passive skills that they have. So buffs cast by Alpha and get a plus one turn duration. Uh, we're used to kind of seeing this from you know some of our other uh, buffers out there, especially our dancers. So it's nice to kind of see that here. And then once per battle, survive lethal damage with 1%. Uh, that's uh, 1%, <laughs> 1 HP. So that's uh, nice to see. You know, they can take one big hit and still keep kicking. So that's kind of nice. Uh, do uh, do note that if it's you got multiple attacks going out there, uh, that's not going to uh, stop it. So uh, we're gonna have our 20% fire, 10% ice resistance. We've been getting a lot of fire and ice resist out of our units here lately. That should be a sign that you might be needing some fire and ice resist. So if you're not picking up these units, might look at what you have in the four star versions uh, that have a little bit of that. So uh, looking into our kit here, we're gonna have some just basic ice and uh, axe attack. Uh, as your initial ones, probably ones that you'll kick out and never use uh, with only being 170 power, probably just not going to have the usefulness for that. I do like this sort of uh, static ailment um, uh, immunity, uh, which 
can be cast to the full front row uh, at max boost, but you're not gonna use this very often. It's just going to be nice to have for a fight that you you know don't want those uh, ailments out there. Uh, so uh, take that as a, uh, for what it is. You'll probably rarely, rarely use it, but I do like them having it, if that helps. So uh, full front row region. We all know region is really awesome. This has 150 strength region, so it's a good, nice, uh, kind of potent one here at 48 SP. Plus, you're gonna get 20% fire and ice defense up. So definitely nice to have, especially when you're going against, what, fire and ice? Which, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we're probably gonna be seeing some uh, battles with fire and ice coming up uh, in our roadmap later. So uh, limit two times per battle at always the last, so at the end of all the rest of your, uh, you know, travelers going, we have a full front row BP regeneration of up to four. Uh, this is 100 SP. So do take a note, 100 SP out of the 383 he has, uh, you know, in his like, pool there. So that that is pretty costly, but you can find some ways and some nice uh, little tricks to utilize this with some of those other units, especially uh, ones that uh, require their BP to reach everybody. Um, so do keep that in mind as this might be a little trick to be able to uh, help uh, support those units. And then what I really like here is we have a four times ax and a four times ice. The powers aren't you know super crazy at 45, but these are some really nice shield breaking abilities between the two of these. Uh, so definitely uh, gets a lot of ice coverage, a lot of axe coverage. It's not random target, which is what we see from a lot of you know these you know four star attacks or something like that. So this is nice to have. Uh, we're lacking some AOE on this kit, but the fact that it's single target, not random, I think kind of makes up for that. In my opinion, it's uh, a lot of those fights out there. You don't always want to AOE because it can cause uh, some issues, um, but that is going to be a negative piece when you're looking at the kit is that we just don't really have any AOE at all to be able to rely on if we needed it. All right, uh, now we're looking at our kind of nuking ability here. This is going to be a one-time axe, single target. The higher the power, the lower Alfin's health is. So uh, it gets up to two times if He's at 10% or less uh, max HP. So if you take a big hit, uh, your proc lets you survive at that one HP, and then you respawn with this uh, haymaker of a 520 uh, power uh, ax move. Definitely uh, going to be one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game, uh, especially if you, uh, uh, you put yourself in that position where you just don't have the HP to do that, uh, to you know worry about uh, being higher than 10%. What I kind of feel about this is we have a unit who has regen themselves uh, and we have a lot of other units that are healing uh, what's what's the chances unless you're really just trying to do this for cheese factor that your uh, unit's going to be under that 10% on you know purpose without the rest of the team having issues so I I kind of look at this as like hey you're probably most of the time getting 260 out of this uh, which is still a you know a really good uh, hit uh, out there it's a nice you know it's still a nice nuke and then if we get anywhere in between I'm not sure exactly where the numbers kind of cut up uh, but I, I just don't think you're gonna see the 520 power often unless you're trying to do it on purpose just you know for the number's sake so uh, and then lastly here a nice little revive we've seen this we, you know this is now gonna be the third unit we've had with it uh, you know it is what it is probably not something you take on the kit though uh I, i'm looking at this and saying okay i'm probably taking the uh at least the front row region and i'm going to take uh whichever shield break i need for the fight so if that's axe or ice uh preferably axe so i can do it you know some more damage uh and then we're taking the uh the nuke ability and so that's going to be your three uh, unless you're really needing the uh, BP regeneration and then you'll have to replace kind of one of those there. Uh, or if you do get him to A2, then you just pick up the uh, the uh, BP back ability and kind of have that for your kit mix there. That's what I anticipate most people running. Granted, we all know that different fights are gonna call for some different things, but I just don't see us bringing revive uh, on him with the rest of his kit the way it looks. 
Uh, let's see, ultimate here. Uh, we know that ultimates are gonna be coming here in just a few months. So we can kind of start looking at these a little bit as well. Uh, we have a nice ax, single target, higher power, once again, sort of a thing. It goes all the way from 600 to 1200, depending on you know where your level is on that. That'll be kind of neat. And for our whales, the awaken accessory, uh, 40 attack, 40 defense, 600 HP. Definitely nice to have. We want some uh, this character to be a bulky character. And uh, this is gonna give us that 15% ax damage up. And then what, 75 or lower, which I think is a little bit more doable, but still uh, problematic to achieve. We're gonna have that 15% attack up there, which is gonna be useful because remember, we're looking at the uh, passive skills up here. Uh, we have neither uh, damage up or attack up here. So we're gonna need to um, get those from someplace else to kind of maximize that damage. All right, time for a little comparison that we like to do here. Uh, just looking at some stats, we're just gonna compare it to Loomis over here. Uh, maybe Theo is also another good one to kind of look at, but I know uh, most people are pretty familiar with Theo at this point. So what we're looking, uh, we're going to have uh, him gonna win out on that physical attack. He's gonna win out on the physical defense. Uh, he's gonna win out on crit but he is gonna fall behind significantly in the speed. Uh, and when we're looking at the elemental attack, Loomis is also going to be able to uh, pack a bigger punch from that, uh, should that be something you uh, really kind of focus about. Granted, we are dealing with different elements between the two of ice versus wind. So, you know, it's not like you're going to be, uh, you're, you'll just bring whichever one is better in that scenario based off of their resistance, right? Or, or on their weakness, right? So there's that piece of it. Uh, passive skills. Uh, kind of going to look at here uh, we're gonna get that nice kind of back row to the front ally region that we're gonna get from Loomis which is nice when you're able to region the front row but then the person who's like next to him on the uh, on that same team or same pairing uh, never gets that region from that unit unless you have a second regener on your team so that is kind of nice for that but uh, not not significant enough in my opinion to uh, uh, to really kind of worry about. So uh, we're gonna get the extra buff turn narration over here with Alfin uh, in that survivability, uh, whereas Loomis is then gonna get that full HP, gonna give her 30% critical up, uh, which is basically like a damage up ability for when she uh, does crit. So uh, circumstantial of having to do the crit, but nice to get that attack buff with it. So. Uh, looking at just kind of the, the skills as we're kind of going through, uh, obviously we know Alfin is going to be a huge shield breaker with being able to get those uh, four hits out for both Ice and Axe, whereas uh, Loomis isn't going to be able to do that. We're going to have a three wind attack and a three uh, single target Axe and then a four Axe random target. So as we see that that's going to have that kind of issue there. Uh, she does get access to at least an AOE, but it's just a one target AOE that might afflict some bleed. Uh, not enough, I think, there to give her any sort of edge really in the AOE department either. So as far as uh, heals, she's got a front row heal plus regen for two turns. At um, uh, That powers a 90 regen on that. Whereas he doesn't have the heal that goes with his regen, but he has the uh, fire and ice defense up. Uh, but that regen is much more powerful than 150 uh, strength. Granted, remember, she's going to come with more uh, magic than he's going to come with uh, off, uh, you know, the base stats so her heal is going to have that a little bit extra than his because of that so uh <laughs> when we're taking it that into account i'm pretty sure his heal is still going to come out on top of that 150 but you know the overall healing that she can do with the heal plus the regen uh she'll come out on top with uh with that so looking at the ultimates uh, she's got that five uh, hitting axe single target so she will be nice then when she can get her ultimate all the way up to level 10. Uh, and that's going to pack a decent punch at five times 130 power. Uh, but we have that one hit over here that has the potential of being at 1200. So uh, obviously uh, we're looking at a nuke versus a shield kind of breaking ability there. So uh, I do think Alfin is definitely going to be a unit that uh, should you have the funds, if you like the unit, if you need an apothecary, I I'm, I'm certainly not going to say to uh, skip this unit. He's really good. I, uh, however, have no rubies uh, to to uh, extend forth to this unit, which is actually, uh, you know, kind of a, a misstep on my uh, issue. On my part, I, I went for 
uh, Lee, uh, Liana, and that's, that's fine, she's a good unit, but I could have used an Apothecary a lot more than I could have used a Cleric, so, uh, anyway, let me, guys, uh, let me know how you guys feel about this kind of new setup here, um, it's, it's a little bit different for me, because I'm not doing as much, uh, sort of, like, cutting and pausing, too, so it's more of a stream of consciousness, which I think it kind of helps make sure I don't kind of forget things or miss, uh, misplace some things in the video, but, uh, let me know if you like this format or the other one, because, uh, I just want to do whatever you guys going to feel is going to be the uh, the most helpful to you and that's been my two cents